So far, we've set up our list, added people to our list, and looked at various aspects of lists. Let's now deal with the more advanced things, such as when we were importing people, we saw that we could add fields at that time. We know that in a normal MailChimp account, we can have up to 30 columns of data, and on a pro account, up to 80. But how do we add fields when not doing an import? Well, that's really easy. For example, in MailChimp, if we click Settings, List Fields and Merge Tags, and I'm just going to remove the image of myself so you can see my screen a little bit better. Under List Label and Type, I have all my field names, and if I scroll to the bottom, I can click Add a Field. To add a field, for example, I could click Text to add a text field. If I scroll down to the bottom again, I can name this field, such as if I wanted to have the person's dog's name, I could add it and click Save Changes. And again, if I scroll to the bottom, I'll see my new field name. Also, what I can do now is if I really want to, I could delete fields. Just click the delete icon, type in delete and click delete. So this is how I can add and delete fields. I can also make the fields required or visible on the MailChimp forms. Very importantly, the default merge tag value. Now, this relates to personalization. In our email campaign videos, we'll see that we can personalize by adding what we call a merge tag. So we could go hi, first name, for example, and that would insert the first name of the email address in our list. But what if we don't have the first name? Well, if we don't have the first name, MailChimp will use whatever's in this field. If we don't have anything in the field, it just won't enter anything. So by default, it would enter the first name, but if we don't have the first name, we need to enter a fallback. So we could just enter here customer or whatever, whatever makes sense, member or whatever, and that's what will appear if we didn't have the first person's first name and we were using that merge tag value in our email campaign. So I'll just make sure to click save changes at the bottom. So we can add fields, we can delete fields, we can add merge tags and so on. Let's now look at styling forms. So for example, when someone unsubscribes in MailChimp, what they what actually happens is they click unsubscribe and they take into a survey form on MailChimp itself. The thing is, that form doesn't look great and we need to brand it for our own purposes. So what we need to do is in our list, we click sign up forms, click select next to form builder. And for example, if I change the forms and response emails, if I change this, to be unsubscribe form, for example. This is one of the forms that people might see when unsubscribing. Now, again, if they do click at the bottom of your uh, of an email you've sent, they won't actually see this. They'll be it's a one click unsubscribe. But we need to style these forms. The good news is, no matter which of these possible forms and response emails we select, doesn't matter which one our styling will filter right through. So for example, I should click design it and I might want to change the background color. So just to show you that you'll see that it does change, I'll change it to funny red, but I'll change it back to white for now. Okay, so maybe I want all my forms, my MailChimp housed forms to, to have a white background. What I can also do is instead of using uh, my list name up the top, I could use my image. So I'll just click on this to get rid of this. So maybe I want to use my logo here and click insert. Click save and insert image. And now my logo shows. So already just by adding my logo and changing the background color, it just looks a bit more professional. And just to show you that the branding filters through, I could click any other form and you'll notice that it's filtered through. Now, again, just to reiterate that your, 
your your contacts will not necessarily see all of these. Actually, they'll probably only see very few. But these are all the potential forms that people might see that are housed by Mailchimp itself, or the emails that Mailchimp might send to people. I'll just make myself visible again quickly. Hi. Okay, so one more thing on the more sort of advanced aspects of lists in Mailchimp is pop-up forms. So if I click sign up forms, if I scroll down, we'll see that we have a subscriber pop-up form. I could select, select, sorry, click select, and I would style this for my own needs. For example, if I wanted to slide from the side, uh, I could you know, add, add many different things. Which fields do I want on my, on my form and so on? Once you've styled the form for your needs, you click Generate Code, and MailChimp will give you the code to add to Squarespace or whatever platform you use. Now, if you use WordPress, it's worth using Jetpack, and Jetpack has a widget included with it, which can be used for the MailChimp pop-up form.